welcome to the Red River Valley of North Dakota. A land flowing with milk and honey. You're watching Beet Farm and Mitch. Well, it's that time of year again. Plugging in the tractors, good old block heaters. So I'm gonna hop in the 180 Magnum here and we've got a tile line closer on here. We've also got the 225 and this tool here, this is kind of a unique tool. This is my dad's pride and joy. This is a plow packer. And so what you do with this thing is you hook it up behind a plow and this kind of helps smack the clods down and level it out good. But we're using our drain tile line closer and we're gonna smack our kind of chunks down with this thing after a little bit. So this will kind of help pack our tile lines down. So while we are waiting for the tractor to warm up, I conveniently have a leftover piece of drain tile here. I believe this is four inch pipe. And so this is what drain tile looks like. It's basically plastic pipe that goes, I think three to six feet underground. And it's got little perforations in it. Kind of hard to see, but there's little like slices. I think over here, yeah, you can see where it's kind of, this must have been a leftover chunk from the field. You can see kind of a hole there, but there's just tiny little slices in this pipe oh there you can really see it and so basically this pipe goes under the ground and it has water flow through it it's similar to like uh like a sump pump system around your house right so you'll have clay tile around your house it goes to a sump pump hole and it pumps out water so you don't get water in your basement basically it's the exact same thing except for a field instead of getting water in the basement it just takes out any excess water out of the soil Okay, so I'm out in the drain tiled field, and so this part of the field has 50 foot tile line spacing, so 50 foot for these guys in between, and here's a trench. So this is what they trench it in, and then we've got the tile line closer here. But we've got some added challenges today because the ground is frozen. So I have made a couple rounds to kind of dial this thing in, and it doesn't look very good after the first round, but when I make the second pass, I'm gonna go down here and come back. Then it looks livable, it's just these ground is so frozen right now and they're starting to not be very workable so we have better get these trenches closed so you can see the trench down there and you can see how the tile line closer is kind of sliding around a little bit and you can see how it's not perfectly laying it on top of the trench that's not ideal so the first pass doesn't look too pretty normally you can do this in one pass but since it's so frozen having to do two. Once I do this once and then I come back it looks pretty good and straight so that I'm happy with. See where I'm going right now it's not too bad either. But holy smokes is this a rough ride. I'm only going like three miles an hour. That's about all the faster I can go on this thing. It's rough. And since it's so frozen my uncle's in the quad track and he's got the full cat on which is basically a big scraper and he's going up one side pushing it in and then up the other side pushing it in. So we're kind of got double trouble out here, the old double barrel shotgun because we got to get this wrapped up because it's going to just keep getting more frozen from here on out. And we did try running the plow packer and it was just too frozen. We didn't want to wreck that thing. And with these big frozen chunks, they weren't even breaking up. So we're going to do the best we can here. If we can get the lines closed, I'm satisfied with that. I'm pretty happy if we can get to that point. Yeah, you can see it kind of hopping over to the one side there and then it's off the row but once i come back a second time it straightens it out nice so that's gonna be a lot better just all this frozen ground yeah you can see it's not even the trench is actually like right to the right side of that pile there and if i go down more it starts plugging it up and Second pass will be a lot better. Boy, it's really frozen in this spot. Well, I'm just gonna be sicker than a dog and sore after <laughs> this thing all day. Here we go. Okay, so this is the pass I just did. You can kind of see how I squiggled off up ahead. But going through this second, oh, we're plugging up a little bit. So sometimes I've been having to kind of touch it up a little bit start getting all those frozen balls plugging up in there. 
but it looks pretty good behind me. Nice straight line right on the trench. That's what we're going for. But I do have to do it twice with this, and my uncle's running the pole cat. My uncle is running the pole cat scraper on the quad track, and he's got to go on either side. I'll get it. I'll send the drone up a little bit so you can see from the air. But he's doing a good job too. My other brother Casey, he's just scoping it out. Says it looks about the same what we're doing, so that's good. And yeah, these ridges, they'll kind of settle back down into the trench where they trench the pipe in. And it'll, you know, settle down and be a nice flat field eventually once we give it some time to settle and work it. Because you don't want to just work it flat because if you do that, you're going to have big divots where they put the pipe in. So we're just, the best thing you can do is kind of get these trenches up here, bust the chunks up a little bit and just kind of let them naturally settle. Folding it back in, nice bead of dirt there. Well, I suppose we better send the old bird up to the heavens. So there you go, you can see the drain tile pattern from the air and I kind of flew over the, uh, the pump there where it pumps it out. If you have a good slope in your field, uh, sometimes you can have a, just a gravity flow where it's just an exit pipe. But a lot of times in the Red River Valley, you gotta have those pumps. So you can see in one of the drone shots how the pipe splits off and is more dense. Uh, that's because there's higher salts in some portions of this field, so I wanted thicker lines in those places because drain tile helps kind of flush those salts out that harm plant growth. Um, so it'll flush the salts out and it'll also keep your field at water level of field capacity, meaning if you have a sponge and it's full of water but it's not dripping, that's field capacity. If you have water dripping off the sponge, that means that there's more water than the soil can hold and so you don't want to have more water than the soil can hold. And it's not even three o'clock yet and it feels like the sunset already, what the heck? Well, we finished her up. So this is actually where the main header line is. That goes down to the pump and all these little ones flow into that. Yeah, she was getting a little frozen, but I'm glad we got the dirt on top of the trench anyway. That's the main thing. So I'm gonna clean a couple of these chunks off of this thing and get it ready for the next customer and then we'll be good. And I gotta be a little careful today. I got my real wedding ring. 
Well, I'd say that's good enough. I just didn't want to leave chunks on the road or in his yard. We'll go drop this thing off and then we'll come out here my pickup and take a quick look at things. And we'll still have time for a date night tonight. Well, I'm happy those lines are closed up at least. And so here's the pump. Pretty much a giant sump pump. Better not drop the camera. So you can see there's the pipe for it to flow in and that's a heater. Not too shabby. So thanks for taking along on my drain tile journey today. And we're pretty much into the winter season, which I'm excited for. Things are going good. I suppose we better give Jenny a call and let her know. Good news, Hodden. We can go on a date tonight. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is Beat Farm and Mitch, and don't forget to keep it sweet. Mm -hmm.